Greetings, epic adventure seekers. I'm Allie Bierman, your guide to demystifying your world. And today we're celebrating episode 100 of Let's Get Metaphysical, Connecting Heart and Mind. And I thought it might be helpful for you to understand what in the world do I mean when I talk about metaphysical. Before starting this podcast, I've been practicing as a metaphysical minister. In fact, the name of my ministry is Metaphysical Ministry International. Well, so what in the world is a metaphysical ministry? The fact is, of all that exists out there, when you're looking at the world through only your five senses, you are only experiencing 1%, 1% of what actually exists. And the meta is the bigger picture of what exists beyond what you can see, hear, taste, touch, or smell. So when I talk about the invisible forces that are driving every decision, every action, every part of your life, I'm talking about the reality that exists that you may not be aware of. Here are some ways that you can become aware. When I was very, very young, my dad transitioned. There's no such thing as death. There's no such thing as birth because who we really are is a conscious awareness going from one existence to the next and kind of taking a little ride in a particular body so we can experience and grow in our experiences. But that's not who we are. So when we're looking at the bigger picture and my dad transitioned, and as I said, nobody dies. Nobody's born, you appear, but you're not being born. You do not die and go into oblivion. So shortly after he had gone to the next plane, for want of a better word, I was looking up at the sky one day and it was pretty much a clear blue sky. And out of nowhere was this silver, I don't even know what to call it, the silver image. It came out of nowhere and it went back into nowhere in this clear blue sky. And I knew it was my dad. Now, when my mom transitioned many, many years later, I experienced her spirit as a golden ball. So those are just some ways that I experience. But let me tell you some other ways. When I had a brain injury and I was not really capable of driving a car safely, I knew I wasn't driving the car, my hands were on the wheel, but it was these invisible forces that actually were driving the car. And today, if I go into a really, really bad episode of something with my heart, and I'm hours away from anyone I know, so I need to be able to get myself to my destination, I again ask the universe, spirit, God, whatever word you choose to use to drive the car to get me safely to where I need to go. Now there's also, here let me give you some other examples of things. They're kind of knowings, but actually it's the universe, the metaphysical part that's directing us every day. And you can learn to tune into it. That's why I'm giving you many examples from my life. When I was moving from Idaho back to New York, all I knew was I wanted to live someplace where there was land, beautiful land, and beautiful water. And I didn't know where I was going. And I just packed up my car and a good friend drove me cross country with all my stuff. And 
there it was. This house that backed on, well, not just backed on, but also down the sides, the Appalachian Trail across the street. There was this huge lake. Did I know about them? No, but the universe did. And the universe knew what I desired in my life. And it brought me to that place. And here's the other piece of that. To get into the main part of that house, I had to walk steps. Now, even though this was, oh, I guess about five years past the uh, brain surgery, I was still learning to walk steps, and I didn't think I wanted to be any place with steps, but when I fell in love with what I saw, what I had always dreamed of, guess who learned to walk steps a whole lot faster than would have happened had I not wanted to be safe living in that house. Now, after uh, some time and being tired of the mice that would come into that house, I then asked the universe to show me another place to live, again desiring the land, the trails, the water, and along comes the place that I'm currently living. So you have a big backyard, it's all mountains. When you walk in the yard, there are rocks everywhere because there hasn't been an overgrowth of the plants everywhere. And that's in the backyard. And out front, there's a very beautiful pond with lots of beautiful fish in it. What do I see out back? I see wild turkeys, deer. I sometimes see a bald eagle, lots of hawks, so many beautiful birds that I never knew existed, of course squirrels and chipmunks. And when there aren't a lot of foxes around, there are also rabbits. And more than that, sometimes I see coyotes, mountain lions, cougars, I, bobcats. I see all kinds of animals. I never saw or heard of before and they just go through the yard and then I go look them up on the internet to find out who they are because I was really interested in all of that. No matter what I, road I go down, there's going to be some place to go hiking. There's going to be water and creeks and rivers because that's in my heart what I was asking the universe for. And the clearer you are with your asking and you're loving it and you're seeing it as it's already real in your life, it happens. Right now, I'm reading all of Dr. Joe Dispense's books because I decided after 11 years, it's time for me to recover the damage that had been happened in that brain injury. So he's saying, look at chart number 12.1 or whatever it was. So I grabbed the book and, oh, it has many hundreds. It's probably 400 pages long. Anyway, I grabbed the book. I opened the book exactly to the page with the diagram he's explaining. All right, here's something else that may intrigue you. I loved living in the Boise area in Idaho. And a big part of that love was no matter what street I went down, I passed a library. I've never seen so many libraries, nice size libraries, really well equipped with audios, with books, with videos, with classes. So I was at a place because I knew the universe always talked to me. And I'm going down a street with a library and I would simply ask, is there something in that library for me today? And if I got a no, I just keep going to my destination. But if I got a yes, I parked my car, I went into the library and then I just asked, direct me please to where you want me to go. Sometimes it was to the DVDs for a video. 
Sometimes it was to the audio section. Sometimes it was to a book. And I didn't have to go looking because it took me directly to the book. Only one time, I think it only happened once, I grabbed for the book. I saw the title, right? Only when I got home and I opened the book, it wasn't the book I thought I wanted. It was a different book. It was next to the book that I thought the universe wanted me to have. However, when I opened the book, I love reading books this way. I just open them randomly, and I know the message I need right in that moment, I'll open to that page. And sure enough, that happened. So even though up here didn't think, up in my mind didn't think I had the right book in actuality, I had exactly the right book. I, I love to do live classes. And one of the classes that's a lot of fun is to levitate somebody. So I would choose somebody, usually the largest person in the room. I choose somebody to be the volunteer to sit on a chair. I then choose four volunteers. There were almost always four women about my size. And I'm not huge. And I'd set them up so there'd be one woman at each net, each knee and one at each armpit and I'd have them go if you're not watching you can't see I am like pointing with my fingers and I have my hands together the fingers are pointing and I would have each woman one on by each knee and one under the armpit and they just go under the knee or under the armpit and I remember one of my most fun experiences was the man who they were going to levitate was easily 200 pounds. So four women, a guy who's about 200 pounds, and I give them the instructions. And when I say, go, everybody just lifts up. Now, if your hands are there, basically, it's two fingers. Your two index fingers would be one woman under each knee, one woman under each armpit. And up the person would go, just flying. I remember when we were raising up a man who was only about 140 pounds. And man, I thought he was going to fly up to the ceiling. So this rather large gentleman, he didn't budge. And he didn't budge, and he didn't budge. I was a little puzzled. And then his wife, who was one of the four women, she spoke up and she said, I don't believe it's possible. And I think because I don't believe it's possible, I'm stopping it from happening. What you believe is in your energy and it's going out. So she stepped out and I asked for another volunteer. And there was a nine-year-old boy there, and he said, I volunteer. Okay, so I have three women my size, not huge, and a nine-year-old boy. And we do the same words, and on go, up goes the gentleman. So there are other things that we do. I like to end a class by having everybody there make a big circle. And instead of holding hands, because if you hold hands, or touch hands palm to palm, you're going to conduct the, we are electromagnetic beings. You're going to have that same energy go through the circle. And I have a special little device. It's a ping pong ball with two contacts. And we have one person hold one contact and you have the circle all the way around and a person at the other end of the circle would touch the other contact. And sure, it's going to light up. But then I'd have people separating their hands. So if you're watching, you can see I probably have about three inches between my top hand and my bottom hand. And everybody in the circle is doing the same thing. Now your mind's going to say, we well, can't complete the circuit. However, 
we're electromagnetic beings, you're not seeing the energy. And twice when we did that, that ball lit up. All of these things and more have me convinced that what goes on in my world is invisible forces. No, I also feel the energy. And it's not always invisible to me because I learned to see it. And that's something you can learn to develop. The point here is the reason I'm doing the metaphysical ministry and why everybody who I invite to be a guest has an understanding of the forces driving the steps they take in their lives. Some of them are in very mainstream businesses. However, when I interview them, I discover that they are in fact following what one gentleman called it a nudge. Took them from this step to that person, to the next person, to the next location, and he built a huge business that way. My goal for you is to start noticing, to start recognizing the messages coming to you non-stop and to teach you how to be able to communicate with the universe, with your guides, with your angels, to enrich your life because the message is coming at you. They're always for you to expand what you see as possible in your life so that when you get a hunch, you now know why to act on it. Thank you for joining me here today. If you haven't already clicked on the check mark for Metaphysical Ministry International podcast, do so. That's the equivalent of what they used to call subscribe. I think they call it follow now. And that way, every week, because we have a new episode every Monday, it will automatically be downloaded to your podcast, whatever podcast you follow, because we are on every podcast platform. We're on radio stations, we're on Audible, we're on Amazon, we are everywhere. And also on our show site and YouTube, you will find the videos. Remember to enjoy, that's capital I and capital J-O-Y, because everything in your life is happening within. Notice what's been there all along and you've been missing, because you'll notice it when you look for it. And I will see you here next time.